Now in this video we're going to build a uh, simple Hertzian dipole for uh, 800 megahertz but I'm going to use quite thick brass tubing in the hope that we get uh, quite a wide uh, bandwidth with this uh, particular antenna. Uh, this is a simple one and uh, it's going to be about uh, 3 dB of gain, maybe 3.5 dB of gain and then in a future video we'll look at how we can build on this simple Hertzian dipole to make something uh, with a little bit more gain, a little bit more range. Now typically if you were, were working uh, at building an antenna for 1800 megahertz you would want to know the quarter wavelength and the typical quarter wavelength for an 1800 megahertz uh, wave is 41.6, 41.65 millimeters somewhere around that ballpark for a quarter wave but uh, this is a Hertzian dipole and a Hertzian dipole is inductive in its design and when something's inductive it's shorter so the quarter wavelength that we need to work with to build a Hertzian dipole for 1800 megahertz is 37.5 millimeters in length for a quarter wavelength now I've gone over this before in past videos for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and uh, 5 gigahertz and uh, 5.8 gigahertz uh, uh, applications um, it's it's too complicated to explain why uh, this design is inductive because as I've said in previous videos once you reach the Hertzian dipole that's when you realize you really need to use calculus or learn to use calculus to truly understand how this works and why it's uh, inductive but uh, basically what I've found out over the years and what some people have said uh, commenting on past videos is uh, they think this is a ballon um, it's acting as a, a type of ballon which makes the whole thing uh, an inductive design and uh, I think that's probably what is going on there but uh, this is the kind of antenna that you reach to in uh, building and realize if you want to progress any further then uh, you know you've really got to learn calculus but 37.5 uh, millimeters is the uh, wavelength that we're going to be using for uh, this simple Hertzian dipole so I've already uh, cut off my uh, length of brass tubing here to 37 0.5 millimeters and I'm using quite a wide diameter of tubing as well this is uh, six millimeters in diameter brass tubing because I'm hoping that we get uh, a little bit more bandwidth um, with this antenna as well so you know if you're a little bit off with your measurements you'll be in the right ballpark because it's going to be quite wide along that band so to start off with you're going to need a length of coax and I find it uh, a little bit easier if you crimp on the SMA connector first this is uh, much longer than we're going to need and uh, what we're going to be doing is soldering this up through the tube and soldering the outer braid of this coax to uh, the outer edge of this tubing now we're going to trim back the coax so we can solder it on here and this is where you can decide how long you want this area to be here that's uh, your coax feed coming into your uh, piece of tubing now I'm going to make this one a little bit shorter so I want it to sit probably about there so I'm just going to put a little mark on the coax and I'm going to trim it back just at that black mark now I've gone ahead and I've prepared everything I've uh, put a line of tin around the top of the tube here so I've pre-tinned that and um, you can see how I've uh, trimmed the coax back now I've uh, trimmed it up into a bit of a uh, disc shape that I'm going to uh, trim up a little bit more when I get the tube on there just to tidy up the edges and then flood solder into this outer braid and uh, connect it permanently to the brass tube so I'm ready to solder this in place you can see I've arranged the uh, outer braid of the coax um, I'm holding it uh, in some helping hands with a crocodile clip at the bottom here and uh, that holds it just level with the coax where I want it to be I'm not going to solder it all in one go I'm going to uh, let it cool down in between because uh, there's a lot of brass here and too much heat build up could uh, melt the uh, inner uh, core of the coax there that little insulator and then it'll be no good so I'm just going to do it gradually feeding uh, a little bit of uh, solder in at a time so we'll just let that cool down 
and I'll work my way along. So I've got that all soldered in place so what I'm going to do is tidy up all the edges of my soldering job here and also file it down a bit on here just to uh, smooth it nice and flat because you want to be careful not to add a couple of uh, millimeters here with your soldering job to the overall length of your tubing but although um, you know at these frequencies you do have a little bit more leeway than you do with the uh, higher frequencies. Now I'm preparing to uh, solder the main driven element in place. Now I haven't measured this yet, it's uh, 50 millimeters. What we'll do, we'll trim it down to size when it's in place. I've uh, tinned up the end here and I've also bent the wires like this to make a kind of a little solder cup there. So I'm going to be tinning that up and then soldering the two in place and tidying it all up. You could also wrap this wire around here a few times and uh, flood that with solder, that will work as well. So I've got everything uh, held in place and uh, it's good practice to hold this down as well. It doesn't take long for heat to travel up there and burn your fingers. But uh, now I'm just going to flood some solder into this so we've got a nice connection like so. And then as I said I can just tidy all this up then with some uh, little side cutters and uh, a file. And now that I've got it all uh, cleaned up there, I'm going to cut the main driven element to length. I've got my calipers here, 375 millimeters quarter wavelength for the Hertzian dipole. And I'm measuring right here, right where this tube stops. Uh, so I'm including that little bit of dielectric there and uh, this solder. So I'm going to measure from there and trim it off at the end of there exactly 37.5 millimeters and uh, that's important if I measured the uh, brass rod and didn't include that I'd probably add in uh, a couple of millimeters to that measurement so that's something to watch out for so here it is uh, finished then and you can see what I've done here as well with the uh, heat shrink tube and I've just uh, strengthened uh, a couple of weak points on this antenna so I've put some heat shrink tubing around there mainly just to tidy it up as well and uh, I've put uh, heat shrink tubing of different diameters around the top here some thinner one over here and then I've built it up with some wider heat shrink just to give it uh, some strength in that area there because uh, you know if it's just relying on that little solder point it is a potential weak point so let's give this a test now over on the RF bench so here it is uh, on the test setup then, you've seen this setup many times before and uh, it's very interesting on the network analyzer. Now the first thing to note is just how wide this is and that's uh, definitely the uh, diameter of the brass tubing. I'm scanning from uh, 1 gigahertz over here up to uh, 2.5 gigahertz over here and you can see this dip here it really is nice and wide. If I move the cursor along there's the uh, 1.8 gigahertz that we were aiming for but all the way along here all the way along 2 gigahertz 2.1 gigahertz all the way to about 2.3 gigahertz really really wide band so this is going to be a really nice antenna for uh, LTE and to be perfectly honest I didn't expect it to be uh, this wide band when I built them before at uh, 2.4 gigahertz they uh, are a little bit wider but not quite as wide as this this uh, really is impressive so yeah it's gonna work really really well for you for your uh, LTE frequencies uh, 1.8 gigahertz up to 2.2 uh, gigahertz there so yeah very nice so as you just saw on the network analyzer, a uh, very nice output from these and uh, very broadband as well and it's definitely going to do the job for you at 1800 MHz and all the way up to 2.2 GHz there. So a really nice basic antenna for around 3 dB of gain and omnidirectional of course. Now in a future video, now that we've uh, had a look at how to build these so I don't have to go over it again, we'll build a uh, slightly more powerful one with uh, around 5 dB of gain and uh, this is one here that I've uh, built recently, has a loading coil there as a separator between the two driven elements and uh, again this uh, final driven element here, this is uh, measured off at 37 point 
five millimeters which is a quarter wavelength but uh, you can also experiment with this section here and make it a little bit longer if you want to uh, slightly under uh, half wavelength for instance but uh, you do pay for that with the VSWR a little bit but again 5 dB of gain uh, all day long with an antenna like this so hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video and uh, you've got some value out of this and uh, want to attempt to have a go at making your own uh, it's a really good hobby to uh, get into and it doesn't cost as much money as it used to uh, these days you can get some uh, really simple test equipment especially for uh, 2 gigahertz and below off eBay now coming out from China and uh, you know if you uh, got some value out of this video please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below I do my best to answer them um, didn't go into too much detail over the theory of this antenna I've, I've discussed the Hertzian dipole in uh, many videos in the past and uh, if you want to help uh, support this channel then please uh, pop over to Patreon uh, you're always welcome and uh, as I said if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one